Music of the Russo brings you a full half hour of entertainment with Lou Lubin, Eddie Green, Ernestine Wade, the Jubilaires, Jeff Alexander's orchestra and chorus, and radio's all-time favorites, Amos and Andy. <laughs> Well, Sapphire has decided to spend a few days with her mother over in New Jersey. She has her bags all packed and is ready to go. But before she leaves, she has a few parting words to give her husband the kingfish. Now, listen, George, while I'm at Mama's, I don't want you to lay around the house all day. I'm tired of coming back and finding this house looking like a pig pen. I want you to vacuum the floors, wash the dishes, and clean out the closets. George, why is you standing there with that silly look on your face? George, is you got them earplugs in again? Take them out. All right, all right. I only wear them in self-defense. You don't yell at me so much. My eardrums has got calluses on them. George, I wouldn't yell at you if you was the right kind of a husband. I can't help getting mad at you when I think of what a wonderful husband my father was to Mama. Oh, sure. Why, all the time they was married, my father never said a harsh word to my mother. Well, he never had a chance. Every time he opened his mouth, the old lady stuck a fist in it. I <laughs> to fight with you now, George. Now, look, before I leave for Mama's, there's just one more thing. The landlord was around here looking for you again, and it must be about the rent, because I checked our records this morning, and we're four months behind. Is that right? Well, glad to hear we's catching up. I'm glad to hear <laughs> well, you better do something about it, because it's serious. The last time he called, the landlord threatened to evict us. Trying to evict us, huh? Well, we has been living here for four years, and we got a right around here to keep on living here. I'll call up that boy, and I'll give him a piece of my mind. Well, you better do something about it. I don't ask much out of married life, but there's one thing I demand, and that's a roof over my head. You hear me? You big, no-good bum, now I'm going. Goodbye. (laughs) Holy smokes, the way she keeps flapping that big mouth of hers around, it's a wonder she don't bruise her lips here. Well, come on, Henry, walk around the block with me and come on up to my apartment for a while. I sort of live in a bachelor's life now, Henry. Yes, I hear that your wife is away on a brief soul journey. Uh, how does it feel being alone, Kingfish? Now, tell me honestly. Well, Henry, uh, I can tell you word for word the letter that I read her this morning. Mm-hmm. I said, dearest darling Sapphire, only now, after you has been away from me for a day, does I realize how much you mean to me and how much I really miss you. Yes. Did you tell her you was counting the hours while she was away? Mm, no, I didn't want to make it too strong. She's liable to come back here, you see. I... <laughs> yeah, that's right. You wouldn't want that tragedy to happen. No, another thing. Henry, the landlord been heckling us about the rent lately. And believe me, I, I really called up him, him up on the phone and told him. Good, huh? Oh, yeah. I, I said, I told him, I said, I'll pay you that rent when I get good and ready. Oh, boy, you know, I, I just bluffed him right off his feet. Scared him, too. Yeah, well, that's the way to treat him, King Fish. Yeah, well, here's the apartment, Henry. Let's go on in and chat a while. Uh, hey, wait a minute. What's this paper tacked on the door here? Hmm, it looks suspiciously like a legal paper to me, Kingfish. Let me see. Notice of E-B-I-C-T-I-O-N. Oh, oh, Henry, let me look at that. Yeah, it's an eviction notice, all right. Say, here, yeah, we got to get out by tomorrow. Court order. Hmm. Henry, what is I going to do? Well, if you raised the money and paid the rent, the landlord probably let you back in. Yeah, but I really broke, Henry. And believe me, it's getting tougher and tougher to get anything out of Andy, you know. Well, Kingfish, you might play on his sympathy, you know, as an old friend. Uh, say, wait a minute, wait a minute. Why don't you tell him you are sick and you need the money for medical expenses? Yeah, I'll call him up and tell him to come over here to the apartment. And then I'll get in bed and I'll really put on the sick act. Yes, that sympathy angle might have the required effect. After all, you remember the immortal words of Shakespeare. There's a sucker born every minute. Oh, yeah. Well, the kingfish called me up and said he wanted to see me here at his apartment. I wonder what's up. Oh, kingfish. Oh, Andy. Oh. Kingfish, where is it? Oh, I see you in the bedroom, man. Oh, Kingfish, you in bed, Jerry. Yeah. Is something wrong? Oh, Andy, I was a sick man. The doctor just left. I've been running a temperature of 115, Andy. Oh. 115? <laughs> Listen, Kingfish, the thermometer only goes up to 110. Uh, yeah, Andy, the doctor had to put an extension on the thing. Uh, <laughs> oh, my temperature was really high, Andy. Two trained nurses had to play a hose on me all night long. Holy smoke. Oh, I was burning up, Andy. Oh, I tell you, when that water hit me, I sizzled like a hot rock. Yeah. 
<laughs> and I'm really sick. They don't give me a blood transfusion, but it made me worse. A blood transfusion made you worse? Yeah, instead of helping me, it fattened up the germs. Oh, I tell you. <laughs> yeah, well, maybe the reason you were sick is on account of your blood. Maybe it ain't got enough red carbuncles in it. <laughs> well, uh, no, and uh, I was worse off than that. I even took the... Uh, I, 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 I took something to eat, you know, to, to, to try to help me, but to tell you the truth, I was too weak to eat. Yeah? Yeah, for the past three days, the doctor's been feeding me intravenously with injections with a hypodermic needle, you know. Oh, yeah. What's he been injecting, Kingsley? Uh, chicken soup and hot coffee, mostly, is it? <laughs> well, how come it uh, didn't help you? Well, the doctor went into a little trouble with the chicken soup. He couldn't get the dumpling suit and needle, is <laughs> I guess you're pretty sick, all right, but tell me this, ain't there no cure for this thing? Oh, uh, yes, ain't there? I was happy that you brought that up. It so happens there is one cure for me. That's good. The doctor said the only thing that can save me is two weeks in some good sand aquarium. Nah. <laughs> yeah, I guess it's curtains for me, ain't there? Unless some kind-hearted friend comes forth with a hundred dollars. Yeah, well, Kingfish, if you're that bad off, why, I guess the only thing that I can do is to, uh, uh, wait a minute. I just noticed something. Let me look under this sheet. Wait a minute. Don't pull these sheets up now. Wait a minute. Hold on. Let, 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 let these sheets go here. Look, Kingfish, you was in bed with all your clothes on. Yeah, well, uh, well, now, well, now, I'm going to tell you, Andy, that's the doctor's orders to, for me to go to bed, just like this. What do you mean, doctor's orders? Well, you see, Andy, uh, when I took sick, I, I had on this dark suit with my black tie. And the doctor said this disease is so fatal that it would save a lot of time not getting undressed, you see? <laughs> this way, all I got to do is stick a white carnation in my buttonhole there and slide me in the box, you see? <laughs> Look here, Kingfish. You is faking this whole business. You ain't no sick at Nyers. What's going on around here? Now, look, man, I'm going to confess something. Now, don't, don't get mad. I ain't yeah. sick, but I is desperate, Andy. Well. I've been evicted from my apartment, and I ain't got no money to rent another place. Andy, when Sapphire gets home from her mama's in three, four days, she's going to nag me like she never nagged before. I don't know what I'm going to do. Well, Kingfish, I'm sorry that I can't help you this time. Like I told you, my money is all tied up in currency. Yeah, well, then. <laughs> How, how can I face Sapphire at a time like this? How can you face her any time? <laughs> you that bad looking. Uh, oh, Andy, what a mess. I was always in a mess. Yeah, I know. And it's all my fault, too, Andy. I got only myself to blame. Years ago, I said something in front of Sapphire that I never should have said. Yeah, what'd you say? I do. Uh, <laughs> That's why I keep shouting. Let him go! Roll on, you Mississippi, roll on. Come on, you lazy steam, roll on. Clear that river, here we come. Watch her smoke by. Hear that engine humming, body take a look at the shore. Soon I'll be with the folks I adore. There's a spot around the bend. That's my home, my journey's end. Come on, you old man, river, come on. Roll on, you Mississippi, roll on. New Orleans, hello, bye-bye. New Orleans, getting long. Going strong, Ben Rouge, so long. Say, Captain, what's the next time we'll see? I'm so excited I forgot my geography. Won't you come along with me? Come along with me. To the Mississippi. To the Mississippi. Now we'll take a trip to the land of my dreams. Sail down that river down to New Orleans. Marty, how I love those skies. We're sailing right into paradise. Hurry, boat, and don't be slow. Someone way too loves me so. Doggone you, old man, river, move on. Roll on, you Mississippi. Roll on, you Mississippi, roll on. New 1950 Rinso is a year ahead, the greatest development in soap history. It's here now, new 1950 Rinso, with three times the whiter washing action of any other soap. That's right. 
1950 Rinseau with Solium has three times the whiter washing action of any other soap. Mr. Carpenter, I'm sure that 1950 Rinseau is far ahead of anything I ever tried. All my white clothes are so much whiter, and my colored clothes so much brighter. Even brand new clothes aren't as bright as my 1950 Rinseau wash. Yes, the sensational whiter washing action of new 1950 Rinseau gets and keeps your clothes whiter and brighter than any other soap. Rinseau's so wonderfully safe for clothes, too, and so kind to my hands. Get the new 1950 Rinseau right away in the same green and yellow package. And now, back to Amos and Andy. <laughs> Oh, me, I got to get a hold of some place to live before Sapphire gets back. Uh, uh, come in, Shorty. Well, I'm glad you... Sw- uh, uh, it's a pleasure. To m- I'm delighted to... You- how- uh, 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 hi, King uh, uh, now, now, look, Shorty, I, I is in trouble. They is victim me out of my apartment, and I ain't got no place to live. Sir, yeah, that's a shame. Uh, ain't you got no relative? Uh, relatives? Yeah, you, you, you and Sapphire c- both come from big families. C- couldn't you move in with relatives? Uh, say, yeah, Shorty. Yeah, that's just the thing for us to do. Mm. Yeah, it's all, <laughs> always better to move in on relatives uh, than to sponge off at total strangers, ain't it? <laughs> yeah, you, you know, you know some kingfish. When I was broke, I moved, I moved with my relatives. But I, I, I only stayed there a week. Yeah, why'd you leave your relatives in a week? I couldn't stand such low-class people. <laughs> uh, you, you know, uh, this relative thing is a great idea, Shorter. Me and Sapphire's got relatives right here in New York City. Mm. Yeah, maybe they'd be glad to take care of us for a short time, say a year or two, you know. Yeah, uh, yeah, that's good, that's good. Well, good luck to you. Uh, I, I gotta be running along now. Well, say, Shorty, I hear that you had a new gal and that you gonna get married. Yeah, yeah, I, I'm, I'm eating the new gal that I've ditched in now. Oh, she, 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 yeah, she's lovely. Yeah, I, I, I'm going shopping with her. I'm, I'm, I'm eating at the, at the dressmaker's. Oh, at the dressmaker's, huh? Mm, she, she's having some alterations on her dress. You, you see, the new skirt length that it's 17 inches from the ground now, you see. And that makes quite a problem for her. Oh, uh, why is that, Shorty? Because her knees is only 14 inches from the <laughs> ground. <laughs> so, you figured on living with Sapphire's relatives, eh, Kingfish? Oh, uh, yes, that's right, ain't it? I ain't figured out just which one yet, though. Yeah, well, how you work the thing? Do you write him a little note, tell him you're coming, or call him on the phone or something? Oh, uh, you mean about visiting? No, Andy, uh, when you plan on spending time visiting Sapphire's relatives, uh, you got to use what they call the cobra technique. The cobra technique? What's that? A uh, strike without warning. <laughs> yeah, that sounds good, all right. Yeah, well, I figured that we could start out with the local relatives. Uh, tell you what, Andy, uh, come on home with me. I'll pack up my suitcases. Then you can carry one of them for me, and we'll go out calling on Sapphire's relative. Yeah. yeah, one of them ought to make uh, be happy to let, 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 me, let me stay with them. Yeah, well, then if uh, they let you stay there for one night, at least you establish a beachhead until Sapphire gets yeah, there. Yeah, that's the idea. You know, look in this suitcase here is some job, King. Yeah, right? well, now here's Sapphire's Uncle Joe's house right here. Well, I'll get up the steps here now. This Uncle Joe is one uncle that has always been crazy about me. Yeah, well, ring the doorbell. Yeah, I'll ring the doorbell here. Yeah. Now, of course, I ain't seen Uncle Joe for, well, for 20 years. I wonder if he's going to remember me. Well, Uncle Joe, how is you? He remembered you, all right. <laughs> well, Andy, I guarantee you won't have no trouble at this place. I'll ring the bell. Yeah, whose house is this, King Uh, This is Sapphire's cousin, Sarah. Oh, yeah, charming girl. Uh, uh, lo- uh, wait a minute, I hear somebody coming. Oh, hello there, Sarah. How is you? Well, if it ain't noodle brain. Uh, <laughs> I just happened to be in the neighborhood, uh, Cousin Sarah, with my suitcase, and I thought I'd drop in to say howdy. All right, you said it. Goodbye. <laughs> well, get your foot out the door. Oh, uh, wait, wait, wait a minute, Sarah. Uh, how is the family? <laughs> how is the kids? Uh, uh, little, little Caesar. Uh, I wonder if he ever remembers me. Yeah, he was talking about you only yesterday. Oh, talking about me, huh? Yeah, had to wash his mouth out with soap. Then <laughs> <laughs> what's that standing there with a Durban holding a suitcase? Oh, I forgot to introduce you to, uh, uh say, Andy, I'd like to have you meet a uh, cousin of mine who seems to be under the imprint that dies a bum. Likewise. <laughs> uh, 
<laughs> Look, uh, Cousin Sarah, it ain't none of my business, but it seemed to me that the kingfish is trying to be nice Quiet, to you. Quiet, fat boy. Yes, ma'am. Now, look, George, you're going to get your foot out of the door, ain't you? Well, Cousin Sarah, uh, well, why don't you just let me in for a day or two? Get your foot out of that well, look door! Look out, look out, stop pushing, look out! Well, how you like that? What you want now? Could I have my shoe back? <laughs> Kingfish, you know, I was getting, I'm getting resourceless walking around town like this. Well, then, uh, since we left Cousin Sarah, my list here shows that I done called on five relatives already, and the results ain't been too good. Yeah, how did the last five stack up? Well, I got one nobody home, three doors slammed in my face, and one dropped dead. <laughs> Do you think there's any chance at this next one here? Oh, uh, yeah, there's a good chance, Andy. Here's where my dear old Uncle Fred lives. Oh. He's the softest touch in town. I can always depend on him. I was over here six months ago. I even borrowed a suit of clothes from him. Oh, yeah. He's a good sucker. Hey, I'll ring the bell there. You know, uh, I would have thought of Uncle Fred to start off with. Yeah. Well, hello there, Uncle Fred. How is you? Well, if it ain't George Stevens. Hello, George. Come in. Yeah, yeah. Uh, give me my suitcase, Andy. You can run along now. Okay. Yeah, well, Uncle Fred, uh, this certainly is nice of you to ask me to come here. Uh, I know that we... Well, at last they done hit one. Uncle Fred really asked him in. Well, I guess I'll get back onto the lodge hall. Oh, take it easy, Uncle Fred. Look out. Take it easy. I'll show with you. Kingfish, what happened? He just asked me in so he could take the suit back. <laughs> well, you really gonna look funny walking back home through Central Park in your underwear. Yeah, you're right. <laughs> me to come here to the lodge hall instead of going right to the apartment from the train. Well, honey, I got some news for you. Nothing serious. It's just that we has done been evicted out of our apartment. What? Well, wait a minute now. Don't start nagging at me, honey. I got it all figured out. All you got to do is to write your mama for some money and we'll run a nice little place. So it's finally come to this. My husband can't even give me a place to live in. George, this is the end. We is finished. You can go your way and I'll go mine. Well, all right. If you want to get uppity about the thing... I'll tell you, though, you will live to regret it. You're the one who'll regret it. You'll discover that I'm the one that has supported us and kept this marriage going all these years. Oh, is that so? Well, you'll find that I, as a man that is self-sustaining, that is independent, that don't need no help from nobody, and someday when you realize that you has lost a big man like me, I know that you is going to want to come back to me. And if you do, you can always reach me, honey, care the Salvation Army. I... <laughs> New 1950 Rinso is here. It's ready to use right now. Ask your dealer for Rinso and get the amazing new 1950 Rinso with Solium. It's a year ahead. 1950 Rinso has three times the whiter washing action of any other soap. Mr. Carpenter, it's true. 1950 Rinso gets my white clothes the whitest white I ever saw. And my lovely spring dresses, too, are so fresh and so gay. All my wash is whiter and brighter than new. It's because of the sensational new washing action of 1950 Rinso. 1950 Rinso gets and keeps your clothes whiter, brighter than new. Whiter, brighter than any other soap. I find that Rinso is so very kind to my hands. And I know it's so safe for all my wash. Ladies, tomorrow be sure you get the economical giant size of new 1950 Rinso. And now, back to Amos and Andy. Oh, Stonewall, I'm certainly glad that I found you in. Oh, hi, King <laughs> Uh, Stonewall, I really got some news for you. You won't believe it, but after 22 years of marriage, Sapphire done left me. Oh, great, man. I'm always glad to hear when a man get a reprieve from the death house. <laughs> yeah, but the only trouble is that I bragged to her that I could get along by, by myself without her supporting me. She said that in a few days... I'd be begging her to take me back. And the trouble is, Stonewall, I was flat broke. Uh, you mean after all these years of marriage, she cut you off without a penny? Yeah. <laughs> now, that's who else? Yeah, Stonewall. <laughs> uh, Stonewall, I was really desperate. Last night, I walked to the river and started jumping in. Oh, you were really in bad shape. Yeah, well, this morning, I was even more desperate than that. 
I barely caught myself just about to walk into an employment agency. <laughs> Holy smoke, Kingfish, this is Fecty Joe Saturday. Yeah, well, uh, what are they going to do, Zumo? Well, why don't you really get away from her? Go out to California. Oh, I'd love to go to California more than anything else in the world. California would take me 3,000 miles away from her. Yeah, where there would be peace and happiness. I'd love the sunshine. Oh, I'd love to go to California, but I can't afford it. Maybe Sapphire's right. Now that she's left me, I ain't got no income. I might starve. Mm. Kingfish, you got a problem. As I see it, that is only one thing to do. Fall back on that old proverb that red-blooded business married men has been following for generations. That famous Latin proverb, Rex Imperator cum Ipso. Yeah, uh, what does that mean? Crawl back on your hands and knees. <laughs> hey, but look at Stonewall, I don't want to go back to her. I just can't stand that nagging of hers. Well, Kingfish, you got to make up your mind whether you want to go back to the nagging or starve to death. Just analyze yourself. Is you the kind of man that can humble your pride and put up with anything just so you can be supported by a woman? Well, is you? Oh, man, yeah. <laughs> Not having no money, I guess I can't put it off no longer. Nagging and no nagging, I'm going to call up Sapphire and ask for peace terms. <laughs> yeah, in this kind of war, money is bullets. <laughs> I just ain't got no ammunition, that's all. <laughs> well, I'll call up here. Let me see, where's that telephone number where she is now? Uh, uh, uh yes, sir, something uh, you want, mister? Well, I seem to be a little lost. I'm looking for the Acme Eureka Employment Agency. The Acme Eureka Employment Agency, uh, yeah, sir. Well, uh, that's down the street, two blocks that way. Then you turn to your right and you go, uh, uh, you go, uh, uh, you think about hiring somebody? Uh, <laughs> yes, I'm going to hire some domestic help. Uh, dem- yeah, well, now, uh, that's two blocks over that way. <laughs> then you turn to, uh, 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 what is, uh, you got to pay them for getting the help for you, mister? Well, in this instance, I'm paying them a bonus of $50. You're paying Acme 50 Dollar, uh, uh, you you go down two blocks. Uh, you know they went out of business today, don't you? They're out of business. Uh, yeah, sir, yeah, sir. See, the employment agency that I run, she'll finally put them out of business. That's what doesn't happen. Yeah. Is this an employment agency? Oh, yeah, sir. I'd be happy to take care of you, yeah. Well, I don't know whether you can help me or not. For one thing, I'm looking for a very high-type butler. Well, I don't know if I could... Uh... Uh, hi, Kingfish. Yeah, uh, well, if it ain't Reginald, a high-class English butler here. <laughs> well, uh, who, who uh, me? Uh, uh, pardon me, mister, just a minute. Uh, I'd like to speak to Reginald here just a minute about his salary. Uh, sort of a private thing, you know. Yeah, well, I... Uh... Uh, yeah, well, uh, come over here a minute, Reginald. Yeah, what's it all about, Kingfish? Uh, look, Andy, I can make $50 as an employment agency if I can hire you to this man as an English butler. Yeah, but Kingfish, I don't want to be no butler. Well, Andy, look here. Just take the job for a couple of days, and, and then you can quit. I need the money. Yeah, well, okay. Don't forget now you was English. Yeah. Uh, Mr. Uh, <laughs> uh, permit me to introduce the finest English butler in the whole United States, Reginald Van Brown. Uh, how do you do? Pleased to meet you. Tally-ho, pip-pip, and the cheerio <laughs> Just a minute. Do you mean to say this fellow is a real Englishman? Oh, yes, sir. Yes, sir. He's full bred. Yes, sir. We got papers on him and everything. <laughs> yes, sir. He made his championship, this fellow did. Yeah. He was born right in England. Oh, yeah. I was a genuine Anglo saxophone. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> you, you were actually a butler in England. Oh, yes, sir. Mother. He done bottled and validated for a lot of the big people the Duke of Wales, Lord Beaverboard, Sir Cedric Airwick, and all them big people. <laughs> Uh, ain't that right, Reggie? Oh, show, show. I worked two years for Lady Godiva, too. <laughs> well, I'll tell you frankly, I don't have too much time to look around for help. The important thing is, are you able to travel? You see, I'm leaving tomorrow for California for a couple of months, and in addition to the regular duties, I want the butler to do the driving. Uh, are we going to drive to California, did you say, mister? Uh, Reginald, would you mind stepping out in the hall there a minute? I want to talk to the gentleman here alone. You get out there, will yeah, you? Yeah, okay. Yeah, get out there. Uh, look, mister, as soon as you mentioned going to California, I know that Reginald would not be the right man for the job. But I tell you what, I'll be glad to take that job myself. You? I thought you were in the employment agency. Yes, yeah, sir, but I've been thinking of giving the business up. You see, uh, I used to be a crack butler years ago myself. Uh, not only that, but I was a crack driver, too. 
I was a regular Barney Oldsmobile. I, I, I wonder if I was driving. Well, I haven't much time. I guess you'll have to do. Yeah. Now, I've got quite a few other arrangements to make with my wife and children going along. Yeah. I'll drive by here at 8 o'clock in the morning. You'll yeah. be packed and ready to go. Uh, yes, I'll be ready. Now, you're sure you can handle the job better than that Reginald fellow? Oh, much better. Yes, sir. You wouldn't want him. You see, he's been driving in England all his life. And you'd wind up driving all the way to California on the wrong side of the road. You see, they go... Well, boys, this is goodbye to you. Yes, sir. The man ought to be along here in the car at any minute now. Yeah. Uh, so you're really going to California, huh, Kingfish? Yes, that's right, Amos. For at least three months. Oh, you was lucky. I guess you'll be sopping up a lot of that sunshine out there, huh? Uh, say, Kingfish, maybe it ain't none of my business mentioning this, but if you sure you was doing the right thing and not staying behind and trying to make up with Sapphire? No, Amos, this is the best thing that ever happened to me. It'll give me three months of peace with no nagging, no screaming, and no yelling at me. I, I'm getting so I can't stand the looks of the woman. Oh, sure. Let the Kingfish alone. He know what he's doing, Amos. Oh, yeah. Peace at last, boy. <laughs> Well, there's the car, boys, coming up here now. Well, so long, boys. Yeah, so long, King. So Pitt. long, King. So long. Have a nice trip. Yeah. Well, yeah, yes, sir. All set. Oh, that's fine. Yes, sir. Where do you want me to sit? Well, I'll drive until we get out of the city. You can sit in the back with the housekeeper for the time being. Yes, yeah, so I'll just throw my suitcase in here. Don't drop it on my foot, you big bum. Oh, sapphire. No, no. <laughs> You know, Amos, the only trouble with hearing Ken Carpenter talk about 1950 Rinso is this. Everybody else thinks it's 1949. And I can't help feeling that they're behind the times. Andy, look here. The women who use 1950 Rinso, they ain't behind the times. There's a year ahead. Well, uh, that's right, Amos, because new 1950 Rinso here a year ahead is the greatest development in soap history. 1950 Rinso has three times the whiter washing action of any other soap. More women use Rinso than any other wash day soap in the world. Get new 1950 Rinso with Solium. That's right, ladies and gentlemen. Get new 1950 Rinso with Solium. Good night. See you next Sunday. Be sure to be with us next Sunday at the same time when Lever Brothers Company, the makers of new Rinso with Solium, will again present the Amos and Andy Show. Life Boy gets skin cleaner. Life Boy, with its purifying ingredient, gets skin cleaner, stops B.O. as no other leading soap can. Yes, doctors proved it. You are cleaner, safer from B.O. when you bathe daily with Life Boy. Get Life Boy health soap right away. Be sure and listen to the Amos and Andy Show at this same time next Sunday. This is CBS, the Columbia Broadcasting System. <laughs> <laughs> 